I want to build a Windows 98 computer. Got this here, and some extra bits and pieces. We'll take a look at it and then try it out. And if it all works, then we'll put Windows 98 on it. Got some random cards. There's a graphics card. It says ATI Rage 2C AGP. There's a USB card. Well, it's USB and Firewire card. I suppose it's USB 2. Yes. Some extra CPUs. We'll get those out and have a look at them. And a TV tuner. That's probably no use now because we don't have analog TV anymore. And there's a graphics card in here. Could be anything, couldn't it? Like a Voodoo 3 or a TNT something? Oh, it's 3DFX, so maybe it is a Voodoo 3. I did have one of those back in the day. Anyway, let's get this board out and have a look. Not sure what the chipset is. Way back when Pentium 3 was actually the the thing, I did have a 1 gigahertz socket 370. It could go up to 512 megabytes of RAM only. And I think it was Intel 815EP was the chipset. This one might not be an Intel board. It's got S... Oh, it's fire. BIA. That's ready to come out. This front panel, front panel stuff. No fan on the heatsink. I think those are all marked well enough that you can pull them off because they put the stickers or the, the labels on there. And right now, it's got a 256 meg. And a another 256. There's 500 megabytes. Maybe that is the the most it can have. Uh, I see some issues. There's a cap that looks like it's been removed there, and there's some fluff on a capacitor next to it, and down there. Uh, maybe this has had it. Uh, that'd be disappointing. After all this, getting excited. Yeah, it's a bit crusty down there. May not have damaged anything too much. Perhaps we'll try cleaning it a bit. At least it's year 2000 compliant. That's something worthwhile, isn't it? You've got to have year 2000 compliant computers. We'll take this power supply out and we'll use it. We'll set it up on the bench so it's easier to see the bits. Four hundred watt power supply, nice. Yeah, okay, wonky heatsink. This various jumper settings. Set the front side bus and all that business. Oh, you can choose between Cyrix and Intel. There. And just something over here, which is probably the mode. The yeah, the ratio. Another Intel Cyrix thing. Yeah, so you got to configure quite a bit of stuff. Oh, full of dust and spider webs. Let's take this heatsink off and have a look at what CPU it's got. Oh, nice, that's dribbled out. This is a Pentium 3, 1 GHz, 133 FSB. So that's good, that's what we want. This needs a bit new, some new thermal paste. Maybe it's got a bit hot and dribbled away. Maybe we can find a better heatsink. I don't know about this one. Yeah, that might work. But we need to give this a little bit of a clean. You can see the crust in there. I don't know if that, that was that populated originally. It doesn't look like it because the, the pads are very clean. Ah, but it looks like that's been replaced. Maybe that's the one that leaked originally. Yeah, that one's been replaced too. Yeah, maybe several leaked originally and some electrolyte has remained and then caused some issues. Let me just give that a little wash. Give it a scrub of a toothbrush. Yeah, 
presumably the battery is dead as well. Let's pull that out just for fun. Get that soaking as well. Perhaps we'll try this one back on it. All right, it's been cleaned a little bit. See, there's three caps that have been replaced. They've been replaced with nice 105 degrees Panasonic capacitors, so that's nice. So, no expense spared there. I'll save the hassle of setting up the CMOS each time. And 0.3, okay. Let's try a different one that I've got lying around. 2.8, yeah, close enough. Which way around did it even go? Weird battery holder. That way, I guess. Strange. You can put it in either way. That's that's not good. There's a plus there, but that's from that capacitor. That's not fitted, so I don't know which way around you're supposed to put the battery. I have to look back at the video anyway. We'll leave that till later. Let's see if this thing even works. Let's get some paste. Some paste on the CPU there. Just a dab would do you. At least it's not that conductive stuff. You want to be careful with that. Now what do we do? How do we get this on without it? Cracking the die. It's on there. Remember back in the day when they used to clip the heat sinks onto the socket like this? If you handled your computer too roughly or if you had to ship it somewhere for warranty or whatever, the socket would just rip out and smash onto the graphics card. Wonderful system. So it's just fan 2, okay? I suppose that's the CPU fan. Chuck in this graphics card. And it's the only issue with working with stuff out of the box. Out of the box is hangs over the edge. Keyboard. Yeah, with integrated mouse, trackball. Just want to go in. Is like a pin's bent or something? Yeah, that's not very good. It came out. Oh, I want to go back in. Okay, then. Graphics card popping out. I right, got a new thing recently. It's a, a very cheap VGA splitter. And then that goes into an HDMI like VGA to HDMI thing, but it means I can have a monitor on it as well. So hopefully if the HDMI, VGA to HDMI thing doesn't work for whatever reason, that thing, because it doesn't work sometimes, especially in, in the BIOS, I should still be able to see what's going on on the monitor that I've got connected. The theory, I haven't actually tested this thing yet. Now we need to work out the power switch. It's one of the ones that isn't marked. There you go. Oh well, yeah, it is a, a 3D. Uh, it's got some issues. Ah, oh, that's sad. We don't get to see it. Uh, so there's definitely something wrecked here. What I get to see on the monitor, which. I don't know if I can move that into the view of the camera. Is it looks like that. Really weird. Maybe that's a graphics card issue. Yeah, it's really not happy about something. Let's power it off. Or at least it boots, I guess. Well, powers up. That's that's a start, isn't it? So we'll, we'll let's try this other graphics card. ATI, something or other graphics card. See if that's got anything to show for itself. That's noisy. Probably why it wasn't in use. Keyboard lights flashed, but yeah, otherwise nobody's home. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing, isn't it? Oh, no, it's come up and it looks okay this time. Yeah, it's a bit disappointing that the yeah, I'm getting unsupported signal there. So, we're in the BIOS. There we go. Snow drives. Um, frequency control. Is there health status? 
voltages. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. At least we'll see it post again. So there you go. All memory detected. Pentium 3, 1 gigahertz. Year 2000. Awesome. What we need to do is hook up a drive to it and see if we can get it to boot up. Got the drive that we tried in a previous computer, or found in a previous computer, it had Windows Me on it. Let's see if we can boot that and see what happens. Or oh, is it doing what it did before? The first time I had to power cycle it and then it came up. No, it's not happy about something. And yeah, maybe it's a bit wrecked from that corrosion maybe. It could be the graphics card's wonky. We can try the graphics card that I actually want to put in the Windows 98 computer and hopefully not wreck it in the process. But got here ATI all in Wonder 128. It's PCI. So let's get that in there and see if that starts up. I haven't used this card for a long time and I'm excited to be able to use it again if we can find a working system. Yes, it came on. So the hard disk has been detected. I just set the floppy to none in the BIOS. Found the drive. Look at that! <laughs> Windows me. Oh, it's gone away. Ah, it's rebooted. Yeah. What is me? Nope. Ah, oh, okay, it wants to go into safe mode or not. Yeah, we'll just try it normal. Nah, it's not happy about something, it's rebooting. But that's perhaps not the end of the world because uh, we want to reinstall Windows 98 on it. We don't care about Windows Me or from some other random hard drive. Okay, well it's not gonna work. I'm a bit sad that this just says no signal or unsupported all the time. That's not what I wanted. I wanted to be able to show you what's on the screen. So I've got this thing. It's a compact flash to IDE. And I've got a 16 gig card. Which I have not tried yet. So let's get rid of that hard disk. And we'll hook this adapter up to it and we'll see if that gets detected. And if it does, we'll find a floppy drive and see if we can do the boot the Windows 98 startup disk and petition the drive. Let's just see if it gets detected first. That's um yeah, we plug the power into it. Yeah, it came up, so that's good. Rem it says remove discs or other media. Press any key to restart. It just needs petitioning. So we'll find a floppy drive and then we'll try it. Okay, it started hardcore raining, so that's probably gonna make a loud noise. I've got a different monitor, so we'll see if that comes up. If because the capture is saying unsupported, we'll see if that can do it. I've extricated a floppy drive from another random old system. Now the cable's just fallen off of it, which is annoying because it's often very difficult to know which way around that's supposed to go. At least this one, it actually says there, 234, so we'll put it around that way. Uh, it's also got a keyed connector. Very good. Okay, trust Panasonic to get it right. Because they don't put an actual physical key on those like they do for IDEs, which is a bit weird because I think that would be important. Hang on, that's the wrong end, isn't it? Yeah, so that key's in a different position to that one, but that's because it goes around this way. With the folded part going to drive A. Anyway, we've got another connector for power, yes. Put in our Windows 98 startup disk. Hopefully this drive works, and we'll get it plugged into the motherboard, and then let's power this thing up and see what happens. 
We'll have to go back into the... If it, assuming it's remembered, we'll have to go back in the bias and tell it it's now got to drive. Yeah, it looks like that monitor's not happy about it either. That's a shame. I don't have a small monitor with a VGA input so that you can see what's going on and play along at home. I've only got that large one. Uh, what a hassle. What I do have... I have got a thing. Perhaps we should try it. I've got a thing that is supposedly a VGA to AV thing. Perhaps we should have a go at that. It's going to be terrible because it's pretty much going A, VGA to AV and then oh, just the V part and then back to HDMI to go onto the monitor. But I suppose it's worth a try since nothing else is working at the moment. Just for fun. Plug in that. Find a USB power supply for it. And we got this weird thing. Converter. I don't know if I've ever used it before, but let's see if that can bring us joy. Wow, look at that. It did. It worked. It's a weird kind of a widescreen y thing. But let's see if there's a menu we can go into. Because this monitor will be set to 4.3 mode. Wow, it looks disgusting, but there we go, we're in the BIOS. Uh, so we're going to go down to... Oh, okay, it's... so it's already sorted. So it's detected the 16 gig drive, so that's nice, that's what we wanted. We've got Fluffy there, and uh, we'll save exit setup. And we'll see if it can boot off of the Fluffy drive. The Windows 98 startup disk in the floppy drive. Seeking. Promise. So we're going to start without CD ROM support since we don't have a CD ROM here at the moment. We're here just to try and prepare the compact flash. Okay, let's go if disk and we'll create a petition. And so let's see what can we do here. Display information. Oh, okay, it's already got a petition on it. An active petition on it. About 32. So that means it's all good and ready to go. Perhaps we'll exit F disk then and we'll format C, presumably it's there, just so that it's formatted with a Windows 98 system. Now we're going to wait for the verifying. So then the next step will be find a CD ROM drive, hook that up, and start a Windows 98 setup. And we'll sys it. And then we'll see if we can boot from it. Mm. Okay, well let's reboot and we'll eject the floppy and we'll just see if it can boot off the little compact flash. It's interesting, it says press Alt F2 to enter a ward flash. Ah, oh, look at that. So the little thingy is happy. That's good. That means we're ready for installing Windows 98. Although it is a bit weird that, I don't know, the first time it sat there for a while with that light on, I don't know what that's all about. Insert disk. Oh, okay. So if you want to update the BIOS, you put a thing on a floppy disk and go out here too. Yeah, maybe we should try to look up some data for this motherboard. Maybe we can get some drivers for it. Okay, I found a CD or DVD drive. And I've also found a Windows 98 disk. So let's install. I wasn't able to get VGA capture working, so for now we're going to point a camera at a screen. It, I presumably it will start working, the capture will start working once we can get the uh, Windows up and running. 
I've also added to USB that USB Firewire card there because that probably be better than the onboard ports. There's the screen. Mm, my computer case has been opening. All right. I suppose we should go to sit up and see what that's got to say for itself. Found all the things. We'll put in a Windows 98 disk. It's possible that Windows 98 disk is bootable. Perhaps should we try that first? Let's see. I'll just eject the drive and we'll see if it can boot from the Windows 98 disk. Oh, we'll have to set the CD-ROM as the boot device. Let's do that first. First device is CD-ROM. Second as the floppy. Third as the hard disk. Okay. Oh, look at that. We can do it. So we didn't. We don't need the Windows 98 disk because the CD-ROM can do it. Start set up from CD-ROM, let's do that. I've also found the original ATI driver disk, so that's good. Set up Windows Now, enter, yes. The computer has an op, we just continue and replace it. That's because we already made the system drive bootable, that compact flash there. It might have disk compression, what? Um, okay, I don't know what we're supposed to do about that. Uh, okay, so we have to exit it. I wonder if we can just go F disk and remove that petition. Win 98. Am I sure? Yeah, why not? No, am I sure? Yes. Alright then, now we've got to restart it. I don't know if the Windows setup is able to create a petition on the drive. Boot from CD-ROM. Let's just see, otherwise we'll have to go back into fdisk and create a petition. It says remove F5 to remove color. Okay. No, oh, you can't put it back. Okay. Conf ah, look at this. So we can configure unallocated disk space. That's good. Do I, I want to enable large disk support? We might as well. Setup will restart now. Make sure the disk is in drive A. I think there's an auto white balance thing going on that it looks a bit weird. Ah, formatting the drive. Wait for it to format. Ah, look at that. I'm going to do a routine check. Ah, uh, what is this? A standard mode bad fault. Remove floppy disks and press a key. Okay. And so does that mean it doesn't work and we can't install it? Ah. Okay, I guess we can't install Windows 98 because it does that, whatever that means. Does that mean it's got bad RAM? Look at that, it's got all the setup files there. Okay, let's eject the disks and boot off the hard disk and see if it will work. And if not, I guess then we'll try changing the RAM. Let's run Windows 98 setup. Oh, look at that, we got there. That's good. Finally got there. And what's even better, the HDMI is working now with that, so we can watch it directly now without needing to use the, the camera thing. So let's do Windows Setup. Preparing the Windows 98 Setup Wizard which will guide us through the rest of the setup process. Please wait. Let's set it installed to a Windows directory. Hmm, so we can have an actual size where it'll be sharp, but uh, it's harder to see, isn't it? Or should we stretch it? I don't know. Let's just stretch it so we can see it easier. Okay, I suppose what we should do is a custom install. And we probably don't need those accessories. Let's put those on. I think we need an address book. Communications. What kind of things have we got in there? Dial up networking. I suppose we should use that. Maybe that's awesome. Maybe we don't need one of those or that. We might as well do that. 
desktop themes, probably should put that on. Internet tools. Yeah. I suppose, I don't know what that is, but let's have that. Let's put on all the multimedia. We don't need those. System tools, yeah, let's put on web TV, we might as well have that. I don't know what that actually means, but wave top to your TV tuner. Okay, give it a choice name. Um, yeah, I guess that's good enough for me. Um, should we create a startup disk? In case the one I've got craps out. I've got a disk here, I don't know what's on it. Should we try making that into a Windows 98 startup disk? I wonder if that would be bad, because we're going to delete something. I don't know. Okay, we'll wait for this to finish. Okay, we created the startup disk, and it's going to start copying files. We can sit back and relax while Windows 98 installs on our computer. Windows just got better. Well, I'm pleased that it got better. It's been a few weeks since the last part of the video where we were setting up Windows 98 and I want to see where it got to because I got distracted during the... I didn't see exactly where it got up to and I haven't powered up the computer since then. Let's power it up now, see what happens. We've got the camera there pointing at the monitor because we're having so much trouble capturing the output directly. We'll see what it does. I'll plug it in now. If Windows boots will be able to install the drivers. In the meantime, some sound cards have shown up, so we might be able to give one of those a try. Got that Viber 16 and a Sound Blaster, presumably. Oh, the floppy drive's not there anymore. Um, I didn't plug that in, so let's go and tell it that we ain't got one. Um, oh, maybe something went wrong. Let's try that. Uh, uh, that seems a bit dodgy. It's not gonna work. This has mem test apparently. There you go. Maybe that will show up some problem. Is that showing bad things? Oh look, it's all errors. And maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe this computer's got dud RAM. That's what it looks like. Maybe that was the problem all along. Yes, look, that error counter is going up. In that case, let's pull out the RAM, or one of the RAM, and see if something happens. And pull out a RAM. It's value RAM, okay. And we'll run it again with this one and see what happens. Oh, well, that's better, isn't it? I guess this is dead. In that case, let's try booting Windows again, and if that doesn't work, we can try the setup again, and it probably would work this time. It has completed a whole something through it, so it's probably enough for now. Let's see if it can start up. It might still have that error, because it might have corrupted something during the Windows installation. Oh no, look at that! That's some Windows 98 goodness. And, even gooder than that, the proper captured input is alive now, so we can look at the real thing. We can accept the agreement. Ah, we have to enter one of those. Okay, it did it. I was happy with the thingy, the code. Okay, so that means when last month, whenever it was I was doing this, when I got distracted and left the setup, it must have rebooted and shown that error message that we were seeing before and then just turned off because I remember coming to it and it was turned off. That's what happened. It tried to access some of this dodgy memory. Perhaps we should dispose of this one. There you go. It's not going to get used again. Oh, look at that. We've got there. I guess we're near the end according to that thing. Setting up hardware and finalizing settings. We're on the last step. 10 minutes to go. 
Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good telling zone for us. Floppy drive noises. And we've got the ATI drivers here, so we'll, once we actually get into Windows, we can put that on. Okay, updating system settings. Nearly done. And I got rid of that black bar. Oh, look, we're going to restart the computer. Let's restart now. Okay. It's going to be the first boot into Windows. That. We can log in with our good password. And wait while it builds a driver information database. I wonder what resolution this is. Maybe it's 800 or 600. Oh, it's found the monitor. That's exciting. Okay, we'll do that. And there's nothing in the drive. Good. It said the name before and then it just installed as a plug and play monitor. Alright. Look at that! Welcome to Windows 98! I forgot I'm supposed to have this light on so that we can see what's going on. Anyway. I suppose there'd be music with this if it had a, a sound card installed. And we'll go into Device Manager and have a look what we've got there. Internet connection sharing is not working. Something with VPN support. Did it install the display adapter? Nope. Okay. Uh, let's go into the BIOS, see if we can disable the onboard sound card, and then we'll plug in the that creative one, and we'll see what it does. I'm going to grab this wonderful thing and plug it in. Although first we have to... I don't know, let's just plug this in now. Then we'll go into the BIOS, see if we can disable the onboard card. And uh, we'll be in here. Uh, where's the sound? Did I get past that? Ah, okay. There's no setting for the sound? Ah, I suppose that should have been yes. Okay. Maybe it's in one of these other ones. No, nah, so it looks like you can't turn off the sound. Uh, well, hopefully it won't interfere with the ISA one. Oh, look at that! Soundblaster 16 plug and play. That's exciting. I suppose if we plug in this cord here, we won't be able to actually get noise out of it. Oh, it installed the IDE channel off of it. I'm going to restart for that. Okay, did that do anything? Did it make a startup sound? Get the good volume mixer, not the stink one like they give you in Windows these days. Just checking if there's some sound. Normally it makes a ding noise when you adjust this. Oh, it's making a little distorted creaking noise. It sort of made a noise. It doesn't sound very healthy though. That's a shame. I wonder why we'll get the uh, the ATI stuff installed from this disc. Well, we'll try to. Hopefully the drive will read the disc. Whoa, look at that. Uh, we're going to do easy install. Or we're going to do difficult install. It doesn't seem to be a difficult install. We're going to do that eventually. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to set up a Windows 98 computer because you know, that's the newest Windows that you can run this demo on. I have not watched that for a long time. I also wonder, did the USB install? I installed this USB 2 presumably card and I had a bunch of files on a USB stick. It's making a lot of noise but not showing us anything. I don't know got there in the end. Yeah, let's see what this reckons. Okay, it's going to install all the stuff anyway. Vertex 7 Multimedia Center. Getting there? Vertex 7. Yeah, I think we can upgrade that to 9. Was it 9A? Or B? Or the 8.1, that was the latest one you could do on Windows 98. Can't remember, it's been so long. I might be able to get actual good resolution soon. Okay, this is a separate thing. And a DVD reading, I have no idea. Oh, so it detected that I put a DVD drive on the computer. That's interesting. Okay. And no one set the region before on it? 
I don't know, I don't know where that drive came from, it wasn't mine originally. No, the display driver by the look of it. I need to try set up some external speakers so we can prove if the uh, sound quality is wrecked from that sound card or if it's actually just the capture that's the problem. And we've got to restart the computer. I was wondering if we install that Rage demo first, but anyway, let's just do that. I thought we might jump into a new resolution this time because we've now got a display driver installed for the first time. Oh, what's it going to install? Ah, all the ATI business. I need to find a a RF source to test the TV tuner. They don't really get those these days because they don't do analog TV anymore. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yeah. It sounds like the sound card's wrecked because it just made a little crunchy noise instead of playing an actual sound. I suppose it could be a power issue if it's not getting the negative 12 volt. Ah yes, this good shortcut bar that you get with the ATI stuff. Let's try this, see what it does. Ah, we don't need to restart, we just want to do it. Oh, yes, that's good. And I really want a working sound card though, but let's just go and install that other thing. The Rage 128 demo, whatever it was. Presumably, this will auto start when we click on that. We need to change this to the small version. Oh, that goes to settings. Remember, there was options for this toolbar thing. Oh, yeah, like that. That's how I had it, and then it just sat somewhere. And then you could start up the TV and the other things. Let's install this demo. And then we're going to try and get the sound card working. Then we can play the demo. Don't know why that sound card didn't work. I did download drivers for the onboard sound, so perhaps we should try that one. Let's see, a custom demonstration of the ATI Rage 128 chipset. Just check. Can turn things on and off. Pentium 2 300 or better, 64 megs of RAM or better, DirectX 6 or better. We think we put on 7. Rage 128 Pro. Yes, the 16 megabyte PCI version. A cheap one, but still pretty expensive. Okay, good. Let's see if we can install this. I don't know if we should do it that way or through the, the installer. I put some stuff into a drivers folder. C Media. There were a couple of things. I suppose we try that. Ooh. Divine in and rear out, I suppose. Teal Evans. Relevant system files may be needed. You may either specify the path or do it later. Uh, I guess just do that. There you go. This is a very weird thing. Oh, is it happy? There's no disk activity. Yeah, it might be unhappy because of this other old ISA card that's still in here. I don't know how these old operating systems deal with multiple sound devices. Let's plug that in anyway and hope and see what happens. Waiting for audio driver to be ready. Maybe it's not going to be ready. Are those dots growing? Should we just exit it? Do we need to close this perhaps? Oh look, doing something now. Oh maybe that was the problem. Ah, uh, that the yeah, the properties window was open. Yeah, that's what I noticed before about Windows, where these older Windows, if you have a properties open, it blocks other things from being plug and played. It seemed promising though, it came up with an actual identified thing. Oh, look at that. Two channels, okay. Oh, look at that, it made click noise. That's good. It means the sound's already working. 
I guess we don't even have to because it's already working. Look at that. Noise. Shut down. Okay, it's horrible noise. Okay, we'll pull out this ISA one. That's quite disappointing. I was looking forward to running some old sound cards, but the answer's no. I wonder if we should try directly plugging this in. There you go. It's a startup sound. Presumably that's the original Windows 98 one, unless that driver installed its own weird one. Let's try this. That's what we came here for. Ah, is this supposed to be sound? Oh, look, now we've got a weird one of these things. Okay, so why didn't the sound come up from this? Oh, okay, it's going to do it this time. Wow, oh, it's laggy. Can you do this one a bit better?
Great, there you go, Rage 128, or Rage Dawning Demo. Back a few weeks later, what we're going to do is see if this CD-ROM drive that can take four discs at the same time will work with Windows 98. It On Windows 95, when you connect it up, it will come up as four drive letters without needing any additional drivers. We'll see if it can do that with Windows 98. Get rid of this this drive, which was a DVD something or other. I'll put this one in its place. And presumably, it's set up. Find out what happens. It's got an interesting mechanism inside it, which allows it to store the other up to three discs behind where the spindle is with the one that's currently active. Makes the drive quite deep compared to the regular drives, although not hugely so for the amount of interesting things it can do. Now let's juice this up and see what happens. Making all the right noises. Let's check. Yeah, I've got the thing there which hopefully we'll be able to see once it gets into Windows. Uh, the CMOS is dead because the battery's still missing. So we're getting there. Alright, anyway, let's see if the CD-ROM comes up. That's what we're here to do, isn't it? Instead of fiddling around with that thing, I think it might have cropped the top off a little bit. A very out of control mouse over here. Oh, look at that! And we do get four drives. And if we, so... Presumably we can just insert whatever we want and it will work. Find some discs though. So it is a slot loading drive. It's got a little flap over it. And we'll put in two discs. We've got an office and a win the Windows 98 disc. So let's see. We we'll put in Office. We didn't install any Office on this, did we? So let's stick that in. So that's for disc. I don't know which one we pushed. Uh, number four, I think. So that should be G. There you go, Office has come up in G, so let's put the Windows 98 disk into E. You can see here going in. And that should come up as E, and we've still got that disk in. Makes lots of noises. Great! I'll just set this up. I'll set the thing to 128 over 1024. We'll see if this actually works. It does, but it looks a bit crusty, doesn't it? It's supposed to be. Yeah, the problem is going to be the. Thing that turns the VGA into HDMI. Uh, that's a bit disappointing. I suppose 1024 by 768 will be better because it's it's probably turning it into 1080 and then I'm now then resizing it back down. Yeah, it's a bit 
disappointing. Anyway, we've achieved the thing. We've got here two CDs in the same drive. And got our special ATI doofy there. And there it is, two discs in the same drive. And if we now go to this one, it will switch them over. You can hear the noise of it swapping the disc. And then we can access that one. We can install Office. Well, we don't really want to do that at the moment. What we want to do is play with the TV tuner here. I've got I sorted out an RF source so that we can. Well, it's a bit. Yeah, that might reach. So that we can try out the TV tuner. And uh, let's get rid of that for now. So the lights on the front of the drive, it has, I don't know how much this light's being moved around while it's running, but it has a light showing you that there's a disc inserted and it's flashing, I think, to show activity. So then you can press to eject. And we can eject the other one so that's great it works with Windows 98 without needing any drivers that's very good so now let's see if we can get this TV tuner or oh, it might be sad now we I don't know yep whatever so let's launch the ATI TV application for the first time and there's a setup process you have to go through. The initialization wizard. Okay, I will need to connect up the aerial. Many controls provide extra functions when you right click on them. Those controls display that in their bubble help. Okay. Video desktop. Oh, do we want this stuff fixed expert ratio? I suppose. That sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Ah, by minimizing the player, this option will turn the desktop into a video screen. That sounds good. Select our region from these regions. Okay. I think that will be us because we've got a laser disc player on the other end of this coax. Uh, we'll get that spun up this is NTSC laser discs and we'll do an auto scan for TV channels I have to mute the TV I think this is channel 4 it's on I wasn't watching did it find anything I don't think we need to do that uh, we don't think we need one of those ah the audio input because there's connections there for it. There is an aux in header, so I guess we'll pick that and hope that works. Ah, look, it says that there's. It must have found channel 4. Okay, I'll find a CD audio cable and then we can connect it up and see if it works. Well, I found that many CD audio, audio cables, but none of them have the right connector. Uh, they need to have that smaller type, which I'm sure I had them. Because I remember seeing them where it's got this type of 2.5 mil, 2.54 millimeter pitch header, and then out of that it's got the smaller one for those 2 millimeter JST style. But I can't find any, so I don't know what happened to them. Anyway, I found this instead, which I think is the official output cable for this graphics card, and it's got composite S video outputs for a second monitor. But it's also got this, which I think is the audio out, which you can loop back into your line in. So we should try this. Let's connect that up. Presumably you can do that live. And we'll see if we can get a content match on... Let's see what happens. If we change that now to line in. Oh, look at that. There we go. Great. Uh, so we use the ATI VCR2 format. Guess that's fine. Instant replay. That sounds exciting. 10 seconds of instant replay. Finish. There you go. Look at that. 
TV. Playing a laser disc. Which is quite exciting. Oh, I remember this from a long time ago. What fun we had. So when you move, minimize it, it becomes the desktop. Which is quite interesting. And supposedly you can record it. I remember that because it would say something like greater than 5% of this is now dropped frames when the computer wasn't good enough. You can see now the hard disk light is going pretty hard out because it's it's saving the file. I don't know where it saved it to. Maybe in the ATI folder. I don't know, I'll have to look up that later on. I don't know, we have to use this weird volume control thing. Was that the line? What's this one? The one that says line, obviously. So we don't get any channels because I think it could only tune in channel 4, the only one that was supported there. And 46 minutes of recording to go. Oh, use that. Is that. Like a majorly delayed volume control thing. Unlock. Okay, let's stop the recording. Oh, okay, now it gives you this. Oh, but the computer seems to have crashed. Yeah, so it just saves it in the temporary file, but it looks like the computer crashes when it... Yeah, look at that. It's fully locked up now. That's disappointing. Well, we got the TV tuner to go, and then it crashed the computer. So... Okay, we got the computer booted up again. Let's start the TV and see if it will work. Did it remember anything that we did? No. Okay, we've got to do all this stuff again. I suppose what we could have done is change the channel that the laser displayer is outputting while it's scanning so we can try and catch more than one channel. Oh, it made a noise. Oh, so it's done. Okay. Good. Oh, we didn't get to choose the, the input thing. Oh, and this time, that exists. Does that mean... No, it's still got only channel 4. Let me just check that the audio comes in. Seems to. Okay, let's close and open this TV player so that it actually it remembers what it is now, so we don't have to do that again if the computer crashes. And what we should also do, oh, web TV, is have a look if that file, because it looked like it was putting a, yeah, this thing, a temporary file, just set that to normal, there's lots of zero kilobyte file, I suppose we'd have to delete that otherwise, it might get upset when we try to make another one, yeah, I had to do a scan just when I turned it on just then, I don't know if that has any good to say for itself. Okay. Let's just try capturing the video again, just for fun. See if it works. Well, I suppose it won't record it if Ah, uh, the recording thing's different, isn't it, to the, the playback one. The recording will be that. So, in theory, it's on line? I don't know. Would you have to have that on for it to be able to record? I guess we'll find out. We might not find out because it might just crash again when we try to stop the recording. I remember a long time ago when I first got this card and my main computer was Windows 95 at that point it would not capture video with Windows 95, it did not want to do that it would just give some sort of error and say no frames could be captured and 
the only solution we could come up with was to upgrade to Windows 98. Yeah, let's just stop that there and see what happens. Oh, look at that. The video editor features requires resources that are in use by the TV. If you select or cancel if you want to launch the editor. I don't know what the editor is, so I suppose we'll do that. What is this editor? I suppose it catches in 320 by 240, so we can play this. And that should come out the wave output now if it did actually record sound. So this is just a basic trimming thing, isn't it? You can go and find where you want it to start at and select that and then go and find out where you want it to end at and select that and then presumably go save and it will create you a new file Choose a stream uh, I suppose that's the stream we want. Maybe recompression. I wonder if that means it will. Oh, look at that. It plays it through as it goes. Very basic video trimming thing. The sort of thing that you use virtual dub for. So that load the TV again now because we asked it to suspend. Yep. So we ended up with 136 megabytes captured in the ATI VCR codec and then we cut a bit out of that ATI VCR 1. Oh, there's a preview thing in the properties, that's quite exciting. And we get the good Windows Media Player from before they made it weird. Yeah, so the captured sound didn't seem to work, did it? Web events. I don't know what that means. Very good, that's the ATI video capture. I suppose the other thing we need to test is the TV output on this this cord here. I wonder if that would give us uh, displays not connected. Let's try something. If we connect this up with the S-Video, connect that onto this S-Video output, and we're going to power this thing up. This weird barrel jack to micro USB thing. It's a bit dodgy. Onto here. And we'll turn this thing on, and we'll choose the video input. But it says not detected. So have schemes. How do you detect a TV? Maybe you got to reboot the computer. Uh, maybe we we'll reopen this properties and see if the TV is there now. Otherwise, we're gonna have to try reboot the computer. Displays. Oh, look there we go. We've got TV. Uh, so that let's put on the input. So that should come up on this. Now it says unsupported signal, that's a bit concerning, isn't it? Uh, let's turn it on and see if we can get anything to happen. Oh, so they're both going to go to 800 by 600, are they? Ah, wait, are we... Really? It's just... So we're not in 800 by 600. Anyway, it's going to change it by a little bit. Maybe that's all the TV output can do. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, it's gone to a weird shape. Oh, it's that weird scrolling thing where it... Yeah, so apparently that's an unsupported signal. I don't know. Oh, there's just different modes of this thing. Okay. Well, there we go. We've got the TV output now on this. Is that a higher quality than the VGA capture? No, it's very fuzzy. What we really need to do is change this to 800 by 600. 
And it's got a weird border around it. Uh, oh, it's the border of that thing. <laughs> Getting a bit messed up here because we've got too many things on the screen at the same time. Uh, it's because that is in a uh, 16 by 9 resolution the capture that's what the problem is anyway that doesn't really matter does it at least we've shown that the tv output works on this cord thing just make that not scaled and see what it looks like so that's the full screen there's some modes on this for smoothing do any of them look good? That looks chunky. Well, that's a two times multiplier. That's that's nothing. So that must be native. Yeah, it's pretty squishy, but that's what you get for this, isn't it? This video. I suppose we can hook up the composite and see if there's a difference between composite and this video. I'll put that in. Now we can switch this to composite. Is that wall? Look at that. Now you can see the, all the crustiness that you get when the color gets squished in with the luminance part of the signal. Whereas when you have them separate, of this video, which is that, yeah. yeah. the colour is much better because it's not being contaminated that's quite interesting to know how much better you can get that's composite that's somehow both and now that's the S video signal yeah so it's a bit soft but the colour is pretty nice very good so we've explored the, the video capture what is that thing? Oh, that's whatever that was that we started. Let's put this back to a sensible setting where it's not squished and weird looking. Displays. Turn off the TV. Keep the monitor on. Oh, I wonder what that is. Ah, look, there's some settings there. So. It's just colour and contrast. Okay. Very well then, let's turn off the TV. Just have the monitor. And uh, yeah, we'll keep that. Now, that has... Oh, there's some parameters to adjust the timing of the monitor. Oh, we can even change the sinks. Very good. Let's put that up a little bit higher. Interesting, you can see there on the pink part the picture shows through on the TV, so it's just using an overlay with the magic pink color. That's quite amusing. So, if we got paint running and did a flood fill of this magic pink, then you'll get a TV player no matter what's under it. This is just using a colour overlay where it matches the pink colour and puts the video in it. Very good! There's are your ATI All-in-Wonder 128 video capture card. The laser disc. Good stuff. In addition to this video and audio output cable for the ATI graphics card that we used previously to get the sound, there is another cable, this unusually purple colored cable which goes onto the 
TV tuner card or ATI graphics card and that provides composite and S-video inputs and a stereo audio input so you can do recordings from VCRs or DVD players or video cameras or whatever else you feel like that's useful in addition to using the TV tuner now an another unrelated thing that we want to look at or try to is I've got this thing here which is Prime Film 1800i scanner for scanning film negatives and positives the system requirements for this is Windows 95 or Windows 98 with Pentium 200 or better I've not tried this before it was just given to me still an original box some manuals unit here got a, a USB cable thing I don't know if it's ever been used but it didn't come with any driver discs 12 volt brick thing it might have been used before because the cords all twisted up USB now we need to check on the computer is the USB even installed is this on already yeah it's on already okay some kind of glow coming out of it so you put your film negative positive whatever in there and presumably that bit winds out with a camera thing on it and scans it but I don't have this the disc it didn't come with any discs supposedly it come with a disc well, it says connect it first connect the power Windows will detect a new device then you insert the CD-ROM but I did find some stuff on the internet uh, which was just an EXE installer thing first we want to see is the USB even installed on this computer because if the USB is not installed then yes yeah, so it's got ah uh, so that must be that because I put in a PCI USB card there that must be what that is what did the firewire on it install made that unhappy okay well it came up with something but it's not gonna do anything is it unless we have the drivers installed I have put in the drivers folder this thing there were two versions of it and yeah, I think that's a newer one it was bigger the other one was something like 1.02 version so this is a cyber view something or other please connect the scanner now and turn it on ah, okay yeah, it's a bit of a ground loop happening there which glitches the video okay does that mean something's gonna happen? did device manager close? Ah, I guess we'll have to do it ourselves did that not work? it appears that Oh, well, we do have the firewire. Anyway, that's not what we came here for. So we ruin it by not having by having this plugged in when I was doing the installation. Let's just restart the computer in case it's going to do something. Ah, look, something's happening now. Look at that—a friend, a single frame film scanner has not digitally signed. Do we want to continue? I guess. Oh, it's reinstalling another game port. Okay. Um, yeah, so that means the one that wasn't working was this one anyway alright the scanner thing might be installed now let's go and have a look in device manager and see if it has I don't know where would it be it would be under scanners imaging devices single thing well that's quite exciting is there some software for it Cyber View X, the user guide for Digital Ice 3. What? Where's Pinball? I wanted to play that. Guess we can't. Anyway, let's look at the scanner. That's what we're trying to do, isn't it? Ah. What? Ah. It's installed as a device. Why can't it communicate with it? We need to try turning it off and on again. Okay. Well, I guess that's the end of that, isn't it? Because uh, we installed it and it doesn't work.
Maybe if we put it in the other USB port? Unable to communicate. There's not much to do there, is there? Uh, maybe we try rebooting again? Nope. Okay, we're not using the scanner then, it doesn't work. Disappointing. Could have a play with LabVIEW version 4. It's only a demo. Couldn't find any actual official versions of LabVIEW that run on Windows 98. So this gives you examples of different things. And... In one of these, they hadn't disabled the stop button, which meant that you could like create your own stuff. That was a bit of pause. There you go. So this one here. Yeah, they've left the toolbar on, which means you can create your own VI to build your own application. Let's see. Which one is? Intensity graph. Yeah, because this is a demo version, it won't let you save stuff. And we want a, a while loop, for loop. And make that go 100 iterations. And we'll put another for loop inside there. And that will run 100 iterations as well. Now, I don't know, can this do auto-indexing tunnels, or did that come later on? If we put a, some data in there, a double, doesn't have automatic, uh, automatic tool selection. So if we multiply that by a random number, and if we go to the wiring tool, Come out there. Can you make? Oh yeah, so that is an auto indexing tunnel. Just doesn't have the icons like it does now. Okay, let's run this. There you go, awesome. Set to auto scale. So it should be a 100 by 100 array. And you don't get scroll bars back in the day. And the wiring tool. Uh, change the indicator, there you go. Yeah, there's no scroll bar option, which is a bit disappointing because it's quite useful when there are scroll bars. There you go, so it's creating data, it's just this graph doesn't really want to doesn't want to know. Maybe we'll put the other one, which I think was intensity chart rather than intensity graph. No. Ah, yes. Why won't that display anything? Ah, here we go. Ah, that's what the problem was. The <laughs> simple. The problem was it wasn't scaling the Z axis, so it was way out of range. Anyway, there you go, that's uh, I guess a static generator. I suppose if we make this actually black and white, I wonder how you do that. Turn off interplate color, and then we'll set this to white. Uh, we need to put on the tool palette. Is that true? Show tool palette. Pick color. We want white. And then we can use the brush to paint that white. No, 
that's not going to do it. I think there's also no undo anyway, so we got one of those now. Oh, we can use the operate. And on that note. Oh, maybe we have to do it in here. No. How do you change that? Seems like it doesn't have undo either. If you make a mistake, then that's that's hooped. Anyway, there you go. It's TV static generator. What I was going to do is make a Mandelbrot viewer, but I need to refer to my other code to see what the formula is for that. Perhaps we'll do that on a separate video called playing with old versions of LabVIEW and comparing it to the current version. I don't think we can save the changes because it, you see, it only goes to a temporary thing. If it says it's a demo, we lost. Okay, great. Okay, I found a copy of the pinball and I stuck it on the hard disk, so let's try and play it. Very annoying that these are not always staying details. Uh, I need to go and set that up. Got to have that so that it looks normal. And we want view like current folder. Uh, although we've got to set it by type. Oh yeah, that is type. It doesn't have the arrows yet. We're too old for that. Yeah, you gotta go like current folder, yes, and then fix these things up. Don't do that so that everything is consistent. Don't do that. Yeah, we're there. There you go. So now when we view folders, they should actually be nice. What is Explorer? Oh, I have to get rid of that thing. Ah, there we go. That's good, now we can use the computer! Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I need to work out how to get rid of that annoying thing. Do that, I think. Is it that? Web style. Classic style? I don't know. Ah, yes, and then go apply to everything so it it keeps the setting. No. Ah. That's really annoying. Why don't we get rid of that so we can just use the computer without things being in the way? Anyway, let's put them all. Let's make it full screen. Ah, is the computer not good enough? Now it actually works! Many hours spent playing this. So I've accepted the mission. Oh, it's the one to go back in that thing multiple times. Oh. Do that two more times. Is that correct? Oh no, it's the top one we need to go through. Right there. One. One left. There we go. First mission completed. Or was that training? Hardly even have to do anything to play this game. It plays mostly itself. Which is good. Yes, we accept the mission. 
Oh, I hit some bumpers, that's the mission. bumpers yet. Get up there. There we go. One bumper hit left for this mission. Select the next mission. Nearly. Ah, we lost the ball. Is that ramp thing? Selected the mission. So the launch ramp to accept it. Ah, oh, we lost the ball again with that same ramp thing, blocker thing, whatever it is. Hit the mission target. Oh, here we go. Now we gotta get up that ramp. Do much to play this. It mostly just plays itself. That's probably why I like it. There we go. We got a high score. Awesome. There you go. That's Windows 98, ATI TV tuner cards, a film scanner thing that doesn't work, and 3D pinball. Hope that was interesting.